this is a team that keeps hanging around the door, but they can't figure out how to even begin to kick it in. They haven't, they've only been to the conference championship once under Josh Allen. They've had two straight losses in the divisional round. You point out the flaws all the time on that team. Offensively, where's the help around Stephon Diggs when you've got Josh Allen? Where are the playmakers? Why are you not integrating Naheem Hines into your offense more? What happened with Gabe Davis this year? There just isn't a star that provides Josh Allen with a better option. And and Josh Allen, is he's starting to slip a little bit in that he is trying too much to do it all himself. Exactly. Making sure. a lot of mistakes. Right. A lot of turnovers. And one of the reasons why he wasn't even second team all pro this year, he was the preseason wire to wire all off season and deep into the regular season MVP favorite. And he throws a beautiful ball. That's a, it's great to look at, but when the, just like last week against the dolphins, it looks great coming out, but when a guy from the other team catches it, not so great. Yeah. Listen, they, but you know, again, yeah, it, it was not his best year in that, you know, department. We know that. He's been great in that department as far as lack of turnovers the last few years. Definitely lost that touch, the Midas touch of going, wait, this is aggressive and this is crazy. I mean, we're still talking about what you said. We're talking about definitely one of the three best quarterbacks in football. There's too much on his plate, all right? I mean, that's the biggest thing. We talk about this a lot. He's, he's, he is the running game, as you saw yesterday. When they couldn't run, what do they do? Oh, we got to get Josh to run the ball. He runs it. You know, again, if it's not Diggs, it's like I don't know who it is. It, it's their their talent is not comparable to Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. That's 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 not even in the same stratosphere as Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, best offensive line in football, Dallas Goddard to go along with it. I mean, the Chiefs, one of the best offensive lines in football, T George Kittle, Pacheco, all the receivers, he's not in that department. I'm not even going to the defensive side of the ball yet. There's no Chris Jones or Frank Clark. There's no Nick Bosa or Fred Warner or Hufunga. Right? There's no, I don't know, I don't have enough fingers to name all the studs on the Eagles. You know, there's no Trey Hendrickson and some of the guys on the Bengals. That's that that's where I don't think people are quite like realizing that. And a lot has been on this one guy, and that's where I will defend him in that department. It wasn't great yesterday, but damn, it how was it gonna be great? The Bengals were getting there with three people. They, he was he was getting sacked in two seconds with a three man rush, right? And then you see replays and you go, nobody's open. So that was tough sled in there. They need more playmakers on both sides of the ball if they want to be in the Super Bowl. They're not in the class of the teams that are left in that department, at least in my opinion, Mike. But before the season started. People that I know and trust around the league were expressing to me concern that the Bills organization, coaching right. staff, front office, feeling the heat, feeling the pressure, feeling the expectations. And why not? We just talked about how the Bengals were overlooked. The Bengals who had gotten to the Super Bowl and almost won it. Forget about them. We're going to put all the hype on the Bills. We're going to put all the pressure on the Bills. We're going to put all the focus on the Bills. And I, I think back to 2014 – Year after the Broncos went to the Super Bowl with John Fox, they lost in the divisional round, and John Elway fired him. Now, I, I Sean McDermott this year, with all the adversities they dealt with, from snowstorms to the DeMar Hamlin situation, he's held that team together when it easily could have crumbled, and they won game after game. They hadn't lost since the the game against the Vikings yeah. in overtime. Right. They'd won every game since then, up until yesterday. But it it just it wasn't it wasn't dominant. Crisp we knew that, as it right? To be. Exactly, it's not dominant, right? And and these issues. And all all I say is this: what 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 any of us believe or say does not matter. All that matters is what Terry and Kim Pagula decide to do. And it would be very difficult to sell making any major changes to the top of the organization after everything the team has gone through this year. There's a strong bond there. But this is the kind of thing where if you remove all those other factors, it's the kind of thing where guys get fired. This is the kind of thing where an owner decides, 
you know what? I've got one of the great quarterbacks in the NFL. I need a coach who's an offensive guy, not a defensive guy. I can't have this thing where if Josh Allen has a great year, our offensive coordinator becomes a head coach somewhere else, and then I have to we have to find a new one. I want my offensive coach to be my head coach, to be joined at the hip with Josh Allen. I mean, the defense was horrible yesterday, and that's Sean McDermott's special. Everybody's blaming Leslie Frazier, but Sean McDermott's a defensive guy. So they got two defensive minds. And, Chris, that's why I'm a firm believer in having an offensive head coach because you have the head coach and the offensive coordinator and the quarterback's coach. You got three in there. And I think back to the 2017 Eagles and all of the, the creativity that you had when it was Doug Peterson, Frank Reich, yeah. and John Filippo. Right. Right? And, and on all that, it's like it becomes this, this laboratory for ideas and and, and it, so again, I'm not. I all I know is there's a danger in getting close, but not close enough. I hear you. When you've got Josh Allen, when you've got a team where people expect you to be better than you right. are, there's just a danger there. I hear you. And I don't know. Are there going to be scapegoats? Will there be half measures? I don't know. I, somebody was saying yesterday, hey, maybe they'll fire Leslie Frazier. Somebody who's kind of plugged in. Um, I I just it's this is the kind of thing that leaves a mark for a team that had those expectations. And it's something that bears watching. And I think if you remove these other factors that Sean McDermott led the team through, I, I think that, that this is the kind of situation where ownership would be thinking, do we need someone who can take us farther than the current staff can? And it's a fair, and I'm sorry, I know it upsets people, but that's that it goes with the territory. At some point, when you fall into that, it's what I say about the Vikings. Good enough is just good enough. Well, is it just good enough, or do you want something more? That's what the Bills need to ask themselves moving forward because yeah. you do it another year, you, you only have yourself to blame. If you keep doing this over and over again and you lose in the divisional round and you lose in the divisional round, a great regular season, lose in the divisional round, I, it's – so Yeah, I hear If you. no big changes are made, Chris – a lot of people are going to be on the hot seat in 2023 in Buffalo. Probably. I mean, you're right. I understand. That's the, the lay of the land and, and everything and every business now. I get it. I hope they don't do anything. I mean, they're close. They got a lot of good things. It's, you know, like the saying, I, they, they got the steak and, and potatoes. They need, just need some sizzle. That's why they got Von Miller. But even when they were getting Von Miller, right, I think we were both sitting here going, I don't know if that's still enough sizzle. There, There's other teams that got, like, extra sizzle to go around here and and that's where I just that's a department that's why I, hey Odell Beckham Jr. when that whole conversation was going on I we were both I think big you know proponents of, of them trying to be aggressive in that we saw this a little bit you know Gabe Davis is solid but he doesn't separate he's not a real good number two I really think in a lot of great offensive minds world they'd go Gabe Davis is a great number three we need to have somebody else as a number two Right. And then they, we, we hit on it. I mean, again, I mean, the, the Bengals got playmakers all over there. DJ Reader, one of the best D tackles in the game. I mean, Sam Hubbard, opposite of Trey Hendrickson, he's really probably a better pass rusher than anybody the, the, the Bills got. I mean, who on the Bills yesterday did we think could even make a play on the defense? Who? You know, Matt Milano, I know, is an all pro and a good player. Right. I don't think he, was, he wasn't all pro for me, but he was really good. They got a lot of good. They need some guys like a Nick Bosa or a Kittle or, you know, um, a, a, a great pass rusher, Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat. I mean, like we've talked about, the other teams have some guys that can go, wait, forget the play and how you drew it up. I can just beat my guy and dominate this way. And that's, to me, where the Bills just don't have enough guys in that department. And I'd love to see them spend some money on those kind of guys this offseason. We are way, way, way good talk over. though. So we got fun. We got a little more to say about about one specific Bills player. We're going to do that later in the program. From now, we're going to take a break. Patrick Mahomes, his legacy grew. I tweeted this on Saturday night, and I believe it one hundred percent. Otherwise, I wouldn't have tweeted it. If you didn't already love Patrick Mahomes, if you didn't love him after what you saw him do on Saturday, you never ever will. We'll discuss Chiefs over Jaguars when PFT Live continues right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.